In one of my research projects, I use a quarter wave reentrant mode cavity to cause breakdown in a small gap. It's this cavity here, and inside the cavity is a rod that resonates in a foreshortened quarter wave mode, and there's a tuner and antennas to bring the microwaves in and out. In the experiments, I need to be able to, on the fly, change the size of this gap between the tuner and the rod, and in fact change the alignment between the rod and the tuner. Adjusting the gap is accomplished with this micrometer, and the alignment's a little trickier to accomplish. I have to actually loosen this bolt and wiggle it. Now I need to simulate that in HFSS. And every time I change that gap size and that alignment, I have to do a new model. And that's very tedious. So I'm going to show you a trick that I use that makes this go much more smoothly. In today's HFSS example, the variables will be the size of the gap and the length of this rod. We also have the alignment as a variable, but I won't be showing that today. And also in the HFSS model, there will be an additional feature on the tuner that's not included in this photograph. Here I am in HFSS, and the model for this quarter wave reentrant resonator is open and ready to go. I want to point one thing out about it. You notice I only have half of the resonator. I cut it in half, and I'm using symmetry to make the problem smaller. And that's accomplished by putting a symmetry boundary and defining it as perfect H. That's a matter of another video that I might get to at some point. So in this video, I want to show you how to change some of the features. If I zoom in on here, we can see the gap between the tuner and the rod. I filled it in with a meshing tool. I'm going to make it very clear. There, this pink thing. I'm going to change the size of this gap. To do this, I need project variables, which are defined at the project level. And this top listing in the project manager is the project. I have two projects open right now, and inside of each project, I have designs. This top project has four designs. I have a vacuum tool, which I use to give a more refined mesh in the gap, but I also use it to define the gap. Watch how I do that. If I click on the command where I created it, the center of that gap is at x equals L. So L is the x coordinate for where the cylinder starts, and it has a height of G. Look at the gap and zoom in on it. The x direction is pointing down. The cylinder starts at an x value where I'm pointing of 38 millimeters and has a length of 1. We see that defined in the project manager. If you go to the project level, which is the topmost level, the project variables appear under this properties window in the variables tab. And the gap size g is 1 millimeter. The way the project manager is organized, you can have several projects open, and in this case I have two projects open, and inside each project are designs. The top project has four designs, and I'm going to look at just this first one here, but you have to have the project level highlighted in order to even see the variables. Now, how do you introduce those variables into the design? Start with the gap. Click on where the gap was created, which is this create cylinder, you see the two variables in here, G and L. They have a dollar sign in front of them. When you put a dollar sign in front of a letter in HFSS, that letter automatically becomes the name of a project variable. The center position for that gap cylinder is at L, or X equals L, and Y and Z, having those values, with a height of G. And right now, G is set to one millimeter. The value is controlled in this properties menu over here. So let's play around with that. If I change one to a half a millimeter, everything moves. I'll back out so you can see the whole design change when I do that. Let's change the gap to two millimeters. It got bigger. You can actually put a formula in as well. So I'll click on rod. Rod is this portion of the resonant rod. This is the conical tip. This is all one piece of copper. I divided it into these two portions. If I click on create cylinder for that rod, you see that the height of that rod, which is the length of that rod, is L minus 10 millimeters. And so if I change L, say from 38 to 28, the whole project modifies with it because also L was used as the location for the base of this gap piece. Do you know why we need a formula for the height of the rod? L minus 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters is the length of the cone portion 
and that has to be subtracted out because L, which right now is set to 28 millimeters, is the measure from the base of this rod to the tip of the cone. And so I'm changing the length of the rod when I change L. What changes about the cone is its location. So let's look at where the cone was created, create cone. The center position of the base of the cone was L minus 10. That's this place where I'm pointing right here because the height of the cone is 10. That's this length here. And so when I change L, the cone will move. Its size won't change like the rod size changes, but its location changes. The rod has a change in size because L is used down here in the height. Change the value of L to 25. And notice how the cone moves. That's how a project variable is used. You create the project variable in the first place when you are creating the object and you put dollar sign name in value and it will automatically appear in the properties and only be viewed when you highlight the project level in the project manager. I'll show you a project variable being defined in real time. Let's start a new project. Just leave it called project 7. I will add a design to it. So I put an object in here, it'll be a simple cylinder of some length. And if you look at the command where the cylinder was created, it has a height of 1.2 millimeters. I want to make that variable. First put a millimeter on that 1.2, so as, as units are clear, minus dollar sign L. That will create a variable called L. And I'll give it an initial value of, well, let's say, 0.4 millimeters. See how it got a little shorter. And it doesn't look right, 1.1863. I need to make sure the units are right. See how nothing is in the units. Highlight project so that I get that and unit is clearly not copper ounce. It's millimeter. And now when I look, it would be 1.2 minus 0 0.4, 0 0.8. Okay. So you do have to watch those units and define them very carefully. And if I want the cylinder to be a different length, just 0 0.6. It got shorter. Zero. It got longer. In fact, I can make it minus 1. It got longer. It gets a lot more powerful if you start to write macros so you can set up a whole bunch of different solutions and go home for the night. But this makes it very convenient for us to change the size of our gap and the length of the rod. And I haven't gone over how I adjust the offset, but that too can be adjusted with a variable. And all of that can be done in one step in HFSS. Change and repeat, change and repeat. Think about how much more tedious it would be if you actually had to redraw the rod a different length, move the gap. So this makes it nice and simple. That's all I needed to show you today.